Good morning. Today is Wednesday the 22nd of June and it's the feast day of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that, strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the second book of Maccabees, chapter 6. Eliadzer, one of the foremost teachers of the law, a man already advanced in years and of most noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth wide to swallow pig's flesh. Those in charge of the impious banquet, because of their long-standing friendship with him, took him aside and privately urged him to have meat brought of a kind that he could properly use, prepared by himself, and only pretend to eat the portion of sacrificial meat as prescribed by the king. <coughs> Such pretense, he said, does not square with our time of life. Many young people would suppose that Eliadza, at the age of ninety, had conformed to the foreigner's way of life, and because I had played this part for the sake of a paltry brief spell of life, might themselves be led astray on my account. I should only bring defilement and disgrace on my old age. Even though for the moment I avoid execution by men, I can never, living or dead, elude the grasp of the Almighty. <clears throat> Therefore, if I am man enough to quit this life here and now, I shall prove myself worthy of my old age, and I shall have left the young a noble example how to make a good death, eagerly and generously, for the venerable and holy laws. With these words he went straight to the block. His escort, so recently well disposed towards him, turned against him after this declaration, which they regarded as sheer madness. Just before he died under the blows, he groaned aloud and said, The Lord, whose knowledge is holy, sees clearly that though I might have escaped death, whatever agonies of body I now endure under this bludgeoning, in my soul I am glad to suffer because of the awe which he inspires in me. This was how he died, leaving his death an example of nobility and a record of virtue, not only for the young, but for the great majority of the nation. The Word of the Lord. In the Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care that no one deceives you, because many will come using my name and saying, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. You will hear wars, you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. Do not be alarmed, for this is something that must happen. But the end will not be yet, for nation will fight against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes here and there. All this is only the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and put to death and you will be hated by all the nations on account of my name. And then many will fall away. Men will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise. They will deceive many, and with the increase of lawlessness, love in most men will grow cold. But the man who stands firm to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. So the readings... Both are about faithfulness and staying true to the Lord, even under the threat of torture and death, which is precisely what the two saints we celebrate today, St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher, underwent. They came from slightly different directions. Eventually, John Fisher was a bishop, um, and he was the only bishop of the English bishops at the time who objected to uh, Henry's dis dissolution of his marriage with Ca Catherine and marrying Anne Boleyn and declaring himself head of the church. They went along with him. Whereas John Fisher said, no, this is wrong. Um, it's against the, the teaching of Rome um, and I will not accept it. In just a month before he died, 
He was made a cardinal by the Pope, um, but he was very, very weak at the end and was uh, put to death in the Tower of London. Thomas More, even more famous, Chancellor of England, great lawyer, author of Utopia, family man. He too was caught in this dilemma of whether the, the king who he had served so loyally should be served under these new circumstances. And he too made the decision, no, the king is in the wrong. And that famous phrase, um, the king is good servant, but the God's good servant first. And making it evident that if there came a clash between loyalty to God and loyalty to the king, he would choose loyalty to God, even if it meant death and suffering. He too was put to death. Both men have resonated through history as the great people who stood up for the faith in time of great threat in England, and we venerate them continually today. I think Thomas More is the patron saint of all Catholic lawyers, um, and many societies across the universities are called the Thomas More Society because of his great learning and erudition. The learning for us is keep witnessing to what we believe to be true. Don't look to the consequences, look to what's true. Nobody's going to come around, and certainly in England at the moment, threatening to kill us. But there is always more subtle ways of um, persecuting and deriding people who believe in, in, these, uh, in, in faith in Jesus. And very often the the scorn and the derision of other people can be even harder to bear than actual uh, physical blows. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, you redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who were slain for God's word, let us give glory to our Saviour, the faithful and true witness. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who bore witness to your love, Set us free to live for you. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who proclaimed your saving death, give us a deep and constant faith. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who took up your cross, grant us courage for every trial. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs washed in the blood of the Lamb, give us grace to conquer our weakness. You redeemed us by your precious blood. We pray as you taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, you set the perfection of true faith in martyrdom. Strengthen us by the prayers of the martyrs, St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More, so that our lives may bear witness to the faith we profess. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come down on us and remain with us always, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. All the best.